In this problem, we have a rod resting on a frictionless surface and a ball with an initial velocity VB1. We're told that they, are, they impact, so we have this state where we have resting and a certain velocity, that's state one. And then we're asked to find the rod's angular velocity and linear velocity immediately after impact, that's state two. We're told to assume a coefficient of restitution of 0 0.6 across the impact. So we're trying to find omega of the rod at state two and velocity of the center of gravity of the rod at state two. So let's look at our two states. State one, just before impact. We're gonna be able to draw a rod the velocity uh, g of the rod is going to be zero. Omega of the rod at state one is zero. But we have this ball that's about to hit point P and it has some velocity B1. Then we can say, take a look at state two. This is just after impact. So now our rod has some velocity of the center of gravity, Vg2. It has some omega. We're going to assume it's in this direction, omega2. It'll have uh, some velocity here of point P. Vp2, and the ball will have some velocity Vb2. Let's say it's in the negative direction. We don't know what that is yet. If we consider the ball and the rod to be a system, then the impact force which is occurring between the rod and the ball is internal. So we can say no external impulses Therefore, we have conservation of momentum for the system. Okay. So we're going to start with conservation of angular momentum. Since there's no external impulses, we don't have to pick a point to remove an external impulse by making its moment arm zero. So we can just do the center of gravity, which makes our equations a little simpler. So we're gonna say that over the system, the angular momentum about point G is conserved. So we'll write the sum over the system of angular momentum at state one is going to be the angular momentum about G at state one for the rod plus the angular momentum about G at state one for the ball. Now the rod isn't moving, it has no momentum, so that's just gonna be zero. So we'll write out the angular momentum for the ball. Now the ball is moving linearly, but because we're taking the angular momentum out about, about a point that is not the ball's center of gravity, which would be B, it does have an angular momentum. So we can write that as IB omega B1 plus RB with respect to G, where B is the center of gravity of the ball, cross MB VB1. Now the ball doesn't have any extent, so its mass moment of inertia is essentially zero. So that becomes zero. And we end up just with a second term. That's gonna be L over two minus B. So B is this distance, small b. And L over two would be the distance between the end and G. In the minus I hat, that gives us R B with respect to G.
crossed with MB VB1, which is going to be VB1 in the J hat. And we end up with a minus MB VB1 L over 2 minus B in the K hat. Great. So that's our momentum, angular momentum at state 1. And now we have to find it for state 2. So at state 2, we can say over the system, the angular momentum about G is going to be again the angular momentum about G at state 2 for the rod plus the angular momentum about G at state 2 for the ball. In this case, we expect that both of them will have angular momentum about state, about point G. So the angular momentum about G at state 2 for the rod is going to be IG of the rod times negative omega 2 in the k hat direction, just the way we've defined it up here. And the angular momentum about G at state 2 for the ball, similar to before, we're just going to end up with this term. And we're going to have a plus MB VB2 L over 2 minus B in the K hat. It's the opposite of what we've got here because the velocities we're assuming are negative to each other. So we're going to put that together, conservation of momentum. We get minus MB VB1 times L over 2 minus B equals minus I G the rod omega 2 plus MB VB2 L over 2 minus B. We're going to call that equation 1. So we have one equation, but currently we don't know omega 2, we don't know VB2, so we need some more information. So we're going to look at the expression for coefficient of restitution. So E is going to be the separation velocity over the closing velocity. In this case, it's going to be at point P along the line of impact. This is going to be the line of impact. So initially, our closing velocity will be VB1 minus the velocity of P of the rod. So VB1 minus 0 because the rod is not moving. And our separation velocity, again, along the line of impact at the point of impact, P, we're going to have VP2 minus a negative VB2. Okay. And so we get VP2 plus VB2 over VB1 equals 0 0.6, which is what we're given. So we'll rearrange that. We get VP2 plus VB2 equals 0 0.6 VB1. Okay, that's our second equation. We now have two equations, but we actually have three unknowns. The second equation added one. So we've got omega 2, VB2, and VP2. So we need at least one more equation. Well, our third equation is going to come from linear momentum. Linear momentum for this system is conserved in both directions. In the x direction, it doesn't really matter. Nothing is moving. Nothing has momentum in x. And there's no impulse in x. So we get 0 equals 0. But in Y, linear momentum gets us something interesting. So linear momentum is conserved uh, for the system.
in the y direction. Remember the impact impulse is internal. So we can say the sum over the system of the linear momentum in the y direction at state one is going to be the sum over the system of the linear momentum in the y direction at state two. And we can write that as the sum of the linear momentum of the two objects. In state one, only one of the two objects has linear momentum, that's the ball. In state two, they both do. So we can write that MB VB1, this is in the J hat direction, equals minus MB VB2, so the ball is going now downwards, plus M of the rod VG2, has to be the center of gravity when we're talking linear momentum. Okay, we'll call that equation three. Fantastic. Now we have three equations and unfortunately four unknowns. That is omega two, VB two, VP two, and VG two. But we know that some of these are related. Uh, P, G, and omega two all relate to the rod so we're going to look at our kinematics now to find those relationships. So we can say VG2, the center of gravity, the rod, equals the velocity at point P2 plus omega2 cross RG with respect to P. VG2, it's only going to be in the Y direction because we only have impulse on the rod in the y direction. There's no x direction impulse if we take the rod as its, as its own uh, object. Same VP2 is going to be in the j hat direction for the same reason. Omega2 in the minus k hat crossed with the distance between g and p, L over 2 minus b in the positive i hat. We'll do that cross product, VP2, J hat, minus omega 2, L over 2, minus B, also in the J hat. And so if we look just at the J component, we get VG2 equals VP2 minus omega 2, L over 2, minus B. And that is equation 4. We haven't added un any unknowns, so we've got four equations, four unknowns now i.e. omega 2, VB2, VP2, and VG2. And so now we just have to solve. So if we take equations 3 and 4, we get MBVB1 equals a negative MB VB2 plus MR, and we're going to sub in our velocity of the center of gravity, the rod, times VP2 minus omega2 L over 2 minus B. And then we add equation 2 to that. We get MB VB1 equals minus MB VB2 plus MR times, this is going to be the VP2 part, 0 0.6 VB1 minus VB2. Okay, that's coming from our equation for coefficient of restitution, plus MR omega 2 B minus L over 2. So we've just removed that negative sign by reversing uh, the direction of that subtraction. All right, so we're going to separate out uh, the VB1 from everything else. We get MB minus 0 0.6 MR VB1 equals minus 
MB plus MR VB2 plus MR omega 2 B minus L over 2. And we're going to solve for VB2. VB2 equals 1 over MB plus MR times 0 0.6 MR minus minus MB times VB1 plus MR omega 2 B minus L over 2. And then we're going to put some numbers in there. So that's 1 over a total of 6 kilograms, 5 kilograms for the rod, 1 kilogram for the ball, times 0 0.6 times 5 kilograms, minus 1 kilos, times VB1, we're told that's 12 meters per second, plus 5 kilograms times omega 2 times half a meter, which is the distance between P and G. And that gives us 4 plus 0 0.4167 times omega 2 meters per second. And we're going to add our last equation. We're going to write that as minus MB VB2, sorry, VB1. L over 2 minus B equal to minus I G the rod omega 2 plus M B V B 2 times L over 2 minus B. So we can put in our e expression for V B 2 and some numbers. We're going to get minus 1 kilogram times 12 meters per second times 0 0.5 meters equals, for the rod we've got minus 1 12th times 5 kilograms times the length of the rod which is 3 meters all squared times omega 2 plus 1 kilogram times 0 0.5 meters times our expression for VB2, which is 4 plus 0 0.417, sorry, 67 times omega 2. And we end up with minus 0 0.6 equals minus 3.75 omega 2 plus 2 plus 0 0.208 omega 2. We separate out omega 2, we get minus 2.6 equals minus 3.54 omega 2, and then that omega 2 equals 1.36 rads per second, or the vector equals minus 1.36 rads per second in the k-hat because of course we defined it way back up here as being a negative k-hat. The last thing we need to do is find VG2. We know from equation 3 we've got MB VB1 equals minus MB VB2 plus MR VG2 that's 1 kilogram times VB1, 12 meters per second, equals minus 1 kilogram times VB2. We have an expression for that, 4 plus 0 0.4167 times omega 2, which we found was minus 1.36 rads per second, plus 5 kilograms times VG2. So that's 12 equals minus 4 plus 0 0.567 plus 5 times VG2. 
or 5VG2 equals 15.43 and then VG2, the scalar, equals 3.09 meters per second and VG2, the vector, is 3.09 meters per second in the J hat. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.